Hey, what's going on developers? In this video, I'm going to create a shopping cart with Next.js version 13, Redux Toolkit, and also Tailwind CSS. So this is the final form of the project that we are going to create today. As you can see, we have a bunch of dummy products here and I add to cart button here below each product. And if I click on one of these products, you can see the number of the products inside the cart is changed and we can increase the number or decrease it and also remove this. And again, add another items. Let's add another items. And if I go to the cart page, you can see the products are here and you can see that each card item has a total price and also a total price of all products inside the cart is calculated here. And we can also change the number of products inside the cart. So as you can see, when we click on decrease or increase button here, the number of the products is changed and also this total price is changed. And remember, this video is divided into two big sections. In the first section, I'm going to create and set up our Redux store. And also, I'm going to teach you how to define custom selectors for our Redux store. In the second section, we are going to create our components and pages with the help of the Tailwind CSS and then consume our Redux store inside them. So I think it's enough with the introduction and let's get into it. Okay, I open up my VS Code and here I have a Next.js version 13 application and I also have installed Tailwind CSS in it. So in this section, we are going to create and set up our Redux store. So the first thing I want to do is to install the Redux toolkit as well as Redux. So I'm going to say npm at Redux.js slash toolkit and then React Redux. Okay, I close this off and I go to the root path of our application and create a folder called store and inside that store I'm going to create a file named store.ts and in this file I'm going to create a store using a configure store function which comes from the Redux toolkit so I'm going to say export const store equals to configure store and then pass an object to it set the reducer to an empty object for now and here we have to export two type from this file, root state and app dispatch. So I'm going to say export type root state. So root state is the type of our whole store. So we are going to infer it from the store itself. So we set it to return type and then pass the type of store.getState as a generic type to this return type. And then we are going to export the type app dispatch. So I'm going to say export type app dispatch and set it to type of store dot dispatch. And next for the simplicity of using use dispatch hook and use selector hook, we are going to create a type version of these two hooks. So I'm going to say export const use app dispatch which is going to be the type version hook of the use dispatch hook and then set its type to a function that returns the app dispatch type and then set its value to use dispatch hook which comes from the react redux and then export the type version of the use selector hook so i'm going to say export const use app selector which is going to be typed version of the use selector hook and set its type to typed use selector hook which is come from the react redux again and set its generic type to root state type and then set its value to use selector hook which again comes from the react redux so in our application instead of using use dispatch we use use app dispatch and instead of using use selector we use use app selector so remember this two hook is typed version of our use selector and use dispatch and use dispatch is used for sending an action to our redux store and use selector is for selecting part of our store data inside our component there in this video you can see how we can use them and now before creating our cart slice 
I'm going to create a file inside the root path of our project named interfaces.ts and inside this I'm going to create interfaces for our entities that we are going to use in this application. In this application we have products and cart items so I'm going to say export interface product which have an ID it's going to be a number and then it has a name which is going to be a string it has a price which is going to be number and also have a image path which is going to be a string and then I'm going to define another interface which is called cart item and then inside it we're going to have a product which is going to be a type of product that we just defined and then we have a QDI which is going to be a number okay and let's close this off and now we are good to go to define our cart slide so I'm going to create a folder inside our store folder called features and inside it I'm going to create a file called cart slice.ts in this file first of all I'm going to export again an interface that describe the shape of our cart state so I'm going to call it cart state and in this slice we are going to have a cart items list so I'm going to say cart items which is going to be a list of cart item so the cart item is the interface that we just defined and then I'm going to define a initial state for our cart state so I'm going to say const initial state set its type to cart state and then set it to object with cart items is going to be a empty array for now and then I'm going to define our slice so I'm going to say export const cart slice equals to create slice function which comes from redux toolkit and then inside it I'm going to pass an object with name is going to be a just cart string and then pass our initial state that we have defined here and then define our reducers reducers is an object that contains our actions in this slice we have a list of card items and each card items as a product and also a qdby so the actions we need for this slice is the increment and the decrement actions so increment action is for adding a new product inside our cart and decrement is for decreasing the number of a certain product inside our cart so first I'm going to define the increment action so I'm going to say increment which is going to be a function which takes our state and also an action and the type of this action is the payload action that comes from the redux toolkit and then the type of this payload is going to be product and then we are going to write the body of this increment action so as you can see the payload action is comes from the redux toolkit and the product is comes from the interfaces file that we have defined earlier in this project okay inside the increment function we have to check if the product that we are going to add them to our cart is already inside the cart so to check that I'm going to say const item equals to state dot cart items dot find and then pass a callback function here which says return each of our elements with the product.id equals to action.payload.id so the action payload is type of product that we have defined here and then if the item is not defined which means that the product that we are going to insert it to our card is already in the card so we have to just increment the QDY of this card item so I'm going to say item that q to y plus plus and otherwise which means that the product is not already in our cart so we have to push them into the cart so we are going to say else state that car items that push a new item which its product is going to be action that payload and then its q to y is going to be one so in this way the increment action works 
And now I'm going to define the decrement action. So I'm going to say decrement, set it to a function which takes our state and also an action that its type is payload action and set its generic type to the product and then write the body of the decrement action. So this decrement action do the opposite of the increment action. So first of all, we have to find the item that contains this product and then check if such an item existed. We are going to say item that q to y minus minus, which decrease the q to y of this item by one. And then we check that if the item that q to y is now equals to zero, just delete this item from the car items. So I'm going to say state dot car items now equals to state dot car items dot filter and then pass the arrow function el dot product dot id is not equal to action dot payload that ID. So in this way we remove the items from our card items with this product. So that's it for the reducers here and we just have to export these actions from this file. So I'm going to say export const increment and decrement equals to card slice dot actions and then export default card slice dot reducer. And now I go back to store.ts file and here I'm going to define a cart which is cart slice dot reducer. And now if I put this cart slice inside the curl braces, this error should go away. And now we are almost done with creating our Redux store. But before ending this section, I'm going to define three custom selectors for our cart slice. If you're not familiar with the custom selectors, you can watch my other video in this topic that its link is on the top of the screen now. But for now, just keep in mind that a custom selector is just like a getter function that computes a return part of the state. The first custom selector that I'm going to define here is the total cart item selector, which returns the total q divide of items that are present in the cart. So I'm going to say const total cart item selector equals to create selector function which comes from the redux toolkit and this create selector function takes two arguments. So the first argument is a list of items that we want our custom selector to watch them and when one of these items is changed the custom selector we compute its return value and then cause a re-render for a component that using that custom selector. So here the first argument is the cart item of our state. So to use this cart item, we have to select them first. So I'm going to say const cart items equals to a function that takes our state, which its type is root state, and then return state dot cart dot cart items. And then in the first argument of our custom selector, we pass the cart items. So whenever the cart items changed, this custom selector is recomputed and causes a re-render to the component that uses this custom selector. And the second argument is a function that returns the part of state that we want to. So this function takes the cart items and then returns the total q to buy of items that are in the cart item. So we can say cart items that reduce and then set a total is going to be a number and a current object which is going to be a cart item and then returns the total plus equals to current item dot q to y and then pass the initial value of the total which is going to be zero so in this way we can return the total items in our cart items list and we should export this custom selector from this file and the second custom selector is the total price selector. So I'm going to say export const total price selector equals to create selector and then pass the cart items as the first argument and then pass the callback function which takes our cart items and then return cart items 
that reduce just like the previous selector we have a total which is going to be a number and also current item which is going to be a card item and then return the total plus equals to current items that q to buy times current item that product that price and then we pass the zero as the initial value of this reduce function so in this way we can compute and return the total price of items that are present in our cart. The third selector is a little different from the previous selectors. Here we want a selector that takes a product ID as an argument and then return the QDI of the cart item with this specific product in our cart. So I'm going to say export const product QDI selector. equals to create selector and for the first argument we want the cart items and then we pass a function with the all previous items in the list which is cart items for now car items and then we specify a product ID which is going to be a number and this function returns the product ID yeah, I know it's kind of complicated, but this is the way the create selector function handle this. So I go for the second argument, which as you know, is the function that return our desired value from our store. So this function takes the cart items and also the product ID Oops, I forgot the comma here between the first argument and the second argument. So this callback function returns the car items that find, find the specific item from the car items with this product ID. So I'm gonna say el.product.id equals to product ID. And then if such an item existed, return its q to buy. So that's it. The first argument of the create selector is the car items and also the product ID. For the second member of the first argument, we just have to return a function. Yeah, I know it's a little complicated, but as I said, this is the way that create selector handle this. And then we take these car items and their product ID as the argument of our callback function and then find the item with this product ID in our list and then returns its q to buy. So yeah, I think it's done with our store and now we can create our components and pages and consume this Redux store and its selector inside our component. So let's go for the second section of this video. And first thing to begin with, I'm going to go to the components folder and create a providers component. So I'm going to say providers.tsx and then create a functional component here. Create an interface for its props and it takes children, which is a React node, and then take the props here. Here in the JSX, I'm going to remove this div and instead add a Redux provider. So I'm going to say provider. And this provider comes from the React Redux and then set its store props to the store that we created in the store.ts file here. So I go back to the provider and set the store and import the store from the store folder slash store file. And then inside the provider, I render the props.children. So essentially each component inside this provider can access to the store. So now I go to the app directory and create a layout file, which is the root layout of our application. And here I create a root layout component, which takes the children as, it, as its props and then render them to the body section. So in the body section, I'm gonna wrap the children with the providers component that I've just created. So I'm gonna say providers 
and then wrap the children inside it. And since I'm using Telvin CSS, I'm going to import the global.css file here. So I can use Tailwind CSS classes throughout all my components and pages. Next, I'm going to create a header components in the components folder. And then turn this div here to a header section. Give it a class name. I want to give it a gradient background color. So I'm going to use BG gradient to B and then from sky 200 to sky 50 so this will give it a gradient background from the color sky 200 to sky 50 and then i'm going to give it a border and also a little shadow so i'm going to use shadow and some padding so i'm going to use p2 and also i want to set its display to flex so i use flex here and then inside it let's clear this header text here and inside i'm going to add a next link so i'm going to use link which comes from the next slash link set its href to our root path and then set its text to home give it a class name so i'm going to give it a text color of sky 600 and let's save this and then go to the layout file here and above our children let's import the header components that we just created okay let's run our server run dev to see the result we're going to 404 error because we didn't create a page.tsx for our root layout here so in the root path of the app directory i'm going to create a page.tsx then inside it i'm going to define a functional component and just say home page for now let's save this and you can see the headers is there with this link and then our page is rendered to the screen Okay, and the next thing I want to do is to create a dummy file in the root path of our project. So I'm going to say dummy data.ts and inside it I'm going to export a list of dummy products. So as you can see there is a list of them and each product object has a ID, a name, a price and an image path. So let's save this, go to the home page and here essentially we want to loop through these dummy products and then render them to the screen so before doing that let me create another component for each product so i'm going to say product card tsx and let's create a functional component and then define an interface for its props this is going to take a product a type of product from the interfaces file and then let's take the props and here for now we just render the name of that product into the components let's give it a class name of border and let's save this go to the page.tsx here look through the dummy products that map then take the products and then render a product card set its key to product that id and then set the product to the product itself let's save this and here you can see the list of the name of the products and let's give this parent div a class name of p4 for some padding and also a flex flex wrap let's save this and let's give it a gap of four for the space between the product card Okay, let's make it a little bigger and let's go back to the product card and continue working on it. So here in the parent div here, I'm going to give a rounded MD class, a shadow and when hover, give it a shadow LG and also a transition. Okay, and then remove this product name. So basically the first thing we want to show in the product card is the product image. So I'm going to use the image components from the next and set its src to props.product.image path and then set its width to 400 and its height to 300 and then its alt to the props.product.name. So let's save this and here you can see 
the product images. And let's give a overflow hidden to the parent div. And you can see this rounder corner is now visible. And then after the image, we are going to render the name and the price of the product. So I'm going to put a div here and then give it a class name of P2 for some padding. And inside it, we're going to have a H6. Inside it, we are going to render the name of the product. So I want to say props products that name. Let's save this and here we can see the name of the product on the right. Let's give it a class name of text sender and also text slate of 600 for its color. Okay. And then, and then we are going to render the price. I create a P tag and inside it, I'm going to say props.product.price and then put a dollar sign here. So you can see the price of each product is now on the screen. Let's copy the class name of this H6 to the P tag again. And the last thing in this product card, we want to put a add to cart button here. So let's create a separate component for the add to cart button. So in the components folder, I'm going to create a file called add to cart btn tsx and then create a functional component and then create an interface for its props. So it's going to take the product then let's take the props in the components and inside the component the first thing i want to do is to select the product qdi in cart selector which we have defined in the cart slice in the redux section so we are going to select this selector so as you can remember this selector returned the qdi of a specific product so here i'm going to say const QDY equals to use app selector and then pass in callback which takes the state as its argument and then return the product in cart selector with the state and also props dot product dot id. So in this way, we can select part of our data from the Redux store. And here we can find that how many of this product is already in the cart. Then I'm going to say if this QDY is undefined, so I put a exclamation mark before it, which means that these products are not already present in the cart. So we are going to render a add to cart button here. So I'm going to return a div then inside it, I'm going to put a button. So this is a button element, which comes from the element folder inside the components. It's just a button with a bunch of uh, CSS classes here. You can check it out in the GitHub repo of this project. So I go back to the add to cart button components. And here inside the button, I'm going to say add to cart text. Let's save this. And now let's go to the product card and import the add to cart btn and set its product props to the props.product. And then save this. And you can see we have an error here. And it's because in the add to cart btn component, we use use app selector hook, but it's a server component. So as you know, we cannot use React hooks inside the server component. So I'm gonna annotate it with the use client. And let's save this and you can see the arrow is gone and the add to cart button is rendered inside the product card. So here in the wrapper div of this button, I'm going to give it a couple of classes, flex and then justify center to push this button into the center. And then after the use app selector, I'm going to use use app dispatch. So I'm going to say const dispatch equals to use app dispatch. So remember this use app dispatch is defined inside the store.ts file and this is the typed version of the use dispatch. So I go back to the add to cart btn and here on the on click event of this button here, I'm going to dispatch an action into our Redux store, which is dispatch and then call the increment function or action you can see that it is imported from the cart slice. 
and then we are going to pass props dot product and now if I click on the add to cart button you can see this button is disappeared and this is because we dispatch this increment action into our Redux store and then this product QDY in our cart selector is rerun again and this time this QDY is not undefined it's returned with one and this is because the QDY of this product in the cart is now one so in this case, instead of returning a plain div here, we want to render a component with two buttons, a increase button and then a decrease button. So let's create a separate component for this. And I'm going to call it qdybtn.tsx. And then here, define an interface for its props. Here, we're going to have a unincrease function which is going to be a function that returns void. And then we have an on decrease function, which is going to be a function that returns nothing. And then we have a QDY, which is going to be a number. And then we take the props in the components and inside the JSX, I'm going to remove this text here. And here I'm going to give it a class with the flex and gap of two, justify center, and also items center. So for now, I'm gonna go back to the add to cart button. And here, instead of returning this plain div, I'm gonna return the QDY BTN components and then set its on increase for now to a dummy function and also on increase again for now, set it to a dummy function. We will change it in a second and then set its QDY to the QDY that we have grabbed from the use app selector. So let's save this and go back to the QDY BTN. And inside this div, I'm going to create three elements, two button. So the first button is going to be the decrease button. So I'm going to put a minus inside it and set its on click event to the props that on decrease. And then put a P tag here. And inside it, I'm going to put the props that QDY and then another button. And this button is going to be decrease button. So I put a plus inside it and set its on click to the props dot increase. So this button components have a variant props. We can pass the danger for the minus button and put the put the success for the plus button. So as you can see, the success variant is going to be green and danger variant is going to render a red button here. So if you check out the button component inside our element, you can see that it's just a bunch of Tailwind CSS classes that make it green or red. And if I click on one of these button here, you can see that they don't work. And this is because on the add to cart btn we didn't pass the proper function for the on decrease and also on increase event of this qdy btn so here instead of a dummy function i'm going to say dispatch and then pass the props dot product and on the on increase we're going to pass the dispatch and then inside it we're going to pass the increment action from our store and then inside it, we're going to pass the props.product. So now if I click on the plus button here, you can see the QDY is changed. And if I click on the minus button here, you can see the QDY is decreasing. And when the QDY is reached to the zero, then it shows the add to cart button again. So if I click on that again, you can see the QDY BTNs are shown again. So the last thing for the QDY BTN that I want to do is to render a trash icon here instead of just minus when the QDY is reaching to one. The package I'm using for icons in this project is the hero icon that is matched very well with the Tailwind CSS. So I go to the heroicon.com and go to documentation and here for installing this package I use this script 
and then here uh, I search for the trash icon and you can see this trash icon is available. So, so let's close this off. I've already installed the hero icon in my project. So I go back to the QDY BTN and on the decrease button here, I use a curly braces here. Let's remove this minus text here. And here we can say if QDY equals to one, then render a trash icon, trash icon and otherwise return the minus text here. So let's import the trash icon from the hero icon. So it is imported from the at hero icons slash react slash 24 slash solids. And here I pass a class name and inside it, I'm going to pass the W4 for its width. And here I forgot to use props that QDY. Okay. If I click, and the add to cart btn, you can see when the QDY is one, the trash icon is visible on the decrease button. But if I increase it, you can see that the minus is shown instead of the trash icon. And in order to make it the same size of the increase button here, I pass a class name and then inside it, I'm gonna use W12 for its width and H 10 for its height and then just copy this class name into the increase button here and you can see there are the same size now and here we're done with the add to cart button so let's go for the cart component so i close all of these components here and then create a component inside our components folder named cart button or cart btn.tsx and then go to the header component and here I create another link set its href to slash cart of course we didn't create this route yet but we're going to create it in a couple of minutes and inside this link we're going to pass the cart btn that we just created you can see the cart btn is on the header and in order to push it to the right in the parent link, I'm going to pass a class name and here I'm going to use ML arrow. So it will be pushed all the way to the right. And also I'm going to use a MR for the margin of right four. Okay. And then go to the cart median here and let's working on this component. Inside it, the first thing I'm going to do is to define an interface for its props and it's going to have just a class name which is going to be optional and also its type is of course string and then here inside the main div of this card btn i'm going to specify the class name and then inside the back text i'm going to use template literal and pass the props that class name of course we didn't take the props here in the component so i'm going to say props and set its type to the props interface and the arrow is gone and then I'm going to add a shopping cart icon, which comes from the hero icons. And let's save this scan because it doesn't have a width. So I'm going to use a W9 for its width. And you can see the shopping is here. I'm going to change it to the shopping cart instead of shopping bag. Let's import this from the hero icon. And OK, now is a render inside the header component. And let's set its color. So I'm going to use text, slate, and 600. And then above the return statement, I'm gonna use the total cart item selector. So I'm gonna use const total items and set it to use app selector. And then just call our total cart item selector that we have defined inside the cart slice in the Redux section. So I go back to the cart BTN and here after the shopping cart icon, I'm gonna use a curly braces here and convert the total items to a Boolean. So I use double exclamation mark to convert it to a Boolean. Now I say if the total items is not falsy, then render a div for me. And inside this div, I'm gonna render the total item itself. So we got an error and this is because we are using use app selector here and it's a server component. So I'm going to annotate it with the use client. 
let's save this and here if I click on the add to cart here and here instead of selecting the kilobyte of the products inside the carts we select the total price of the cart so here instead of the total price selector we should use total cart item selector and yeah if I change this you can see the number of item inside our cart is changed so now there are three items inside our cart but it's kind of ugly here so let's give a couple of table and CSS classes to style this number so in the pattern div I'm going to use a BG red 500 for its back color and you can see the color has changed and then I'm going to use flex justify center and also items center to push it to the center of this div and then I'm going to use a rounded full to make it like a circle it's kind of like a pill so let's give it a W6 and now it's kind of circle and then let's give it a absolute position so I'm going to use absolute and then inside the root parent of this component I'm going to pass a relative class because we want to position this circle div here relative to the parent div and then I pass a top 0 maybe minus top 2 and then minus right so here you can see this number is positioned on the top right of this shopping cart and let's give it a text color of white okay and let's do a crazy thing here let's give it an animation so when we change the number the animation is triggered so here we can use animate ping and you can see it's going to run the animation forever so we don't want this, we just want to play the animation when the number is changed. In order to do that, we are going to define a animation inside our tailwind.config.js file. So I've already defined it, defined a keyframe here, ping once, you can check it out inside our GitHub repo of this project, and then define an animation with the name of ping once. I close the tailwind.config.js file, and here, we can say ping animate dash ping once and you can see that the first time that the number is rendered to the screen the animation we will play it but after that when the number is changed the animation is not played so in order to fix this problem in this div I'm gonna pass a key and set it to total items so now when the number changed, the key of this div is changed and then this whole div here is re-render again. And you can see that for every changes to the total items, the animation is played. So yeah, that's it for the cart button here. So for the last thing, let's create the cart page. So I go to the app directory and create a folder named cart and inside it we're going to create a page.tsx so let's rename it to the cart page okay first of all let's annotate it with the use client because we want to use the use app selector here inside this page and here I'm going to say const cart item equals to use app selector and it takes our state as you can see using the use app selector is the type version of the use selector so we don't have to specify the type of this state it's just inferred automatically so here I'm going to return the state dot cart dot cart items and then in the JSX let's give it a class name of p2 for padding and inside it let's loop through the cart items item then here we are going to render each cart item inside this page so to do that let's create a separate component again here in the component folder create a file called cart item card.tsx and for the first thing let's define an interface for its props so it's going to take a cart item which is type of cart item that comes from the interfaces file and then take the props inside the components so you know what let's destructure the cart item 
of the props to make our work easier. And let's give it a couple of table and CSS class. I'm gonna use grid and also I want four columns. So I'm gonna use grid equals four and then items center and then py two to give it a vertical padding. And then inside it, first of all, I'm gonna render the image of the product. So I'm gonna use the next image, set the src to the cart item that product that image path and then width of 200 and height of 150 and also set its alt to card item product that name so let's save this and for now it's enough go to the card page and here inside the card items that map function let's render a card item card for each of the card items inside the card items list and set the its card item to item and then if I click on the card button here you can see that let's maximize it you can see that I'm headed to the slash card route and here you can see the image of the product that are inside our card so let's make it smaller and go back to our card item so let's give it a class name to the image to make it a little rounded I'm going to use rounded MD and now we can see that the corner of the image is now rounded and then I'm going to put the product name so here I'm using a p tag and inside it I'm going to use card item that product that name let's give it a class so I'm going to use class name and then set its text color to slate 600 let's save this and then let's give it a text center and then I put a div here and inside that div I'm going to put a p tag and inside it I'm going to use card item that product that price and then a dollar sign and then another p tag and inside it I'm going to use the multiply character so if I save this you can see this multiply character and then I'm going to again use the qdy btn component and then set its qdy to the card item that qdy and set on decrease to a function that returns dispatch so let's copy them from the add to cart button here let's copy on decrease and on increase and here paste them to speed up the process let's save them and let's import the oh let's define the dispatch here so i'm going to say const dispatch equals to use app dispatch and then let's import the decrement action and also increment action and here let's say cart item dot product and fix this as well cart item okay let's save this and now if i click this button you can see that the total qdy items inside our cart is changed and if i reset the zoom to 100 percent you can see that its structure is shown better and here in order to align them inside the this parent div here i'm going to add a class name and inside it i'm going to pass flex and then flex call to specify the direction of the flex to column and then items center and also justify center you can see that they are aligned in the center and then i'm going to use a gap of three to give them a little space in between and then after this div here i'm going to use a p tag again and inside it i'm going to say car item dot q to y times car item dot product dot price which calculates the total price of these card item and you can see there are six of this product with the price of 1200 and the total price is 7200 
So let's give it a class name again, text center, and let's give it a border to the root if border B, and you can see that this border is now visible on the screen. So I go to the home and add a, another product to our cart, go back to our cart, you can see that there are two products inside our cart. And the, for the last thing, let's add the total price of the whole items inside our cart at the bottom of the cart page. So I go to the cart page here, and after these cart items, I'm going to select the total price selector from our Redux store. So I'm going to say const total price equals to use app selector and then pass the total price selector which we have defined inside the card slice here. You can see it calculates the total price of all items inside our cart. So I go back to the card page and then after this card items I'm going to put a p tag and set its class name to text slate 600 for its color and then say total price colon and then put a span element and inside it I'm going to put the total price that we just selected from our Redux store and let's give it a class name to this span so I'm going to use the text slate 900 for a darker color and also let's add a font bold and let's add a dollar sign after the total price and here we can see the total price of these items is 9600 and let's maximize the browser and go to the home page and add another product you can see that the number of products is changed and let's go back to the cart section and let's change the QDY and as you can see with every changes these total prices and also this whole price is changed so let's go back to the home and let's decrease and then let's remove them so you can see that the add to cart button is shown again and if I go back to the cart you can see that the little product is removed from the cart and you can also remove a product here and yeah I think we're done with this project and we have successfully created a cart functionality inside our Next.js project with the help of the Redux toolkit and also Tailwind CSS if you liked the video, please subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for my next video. Bye-bye.